I come up just a minute here. It's uh, a Tuesday edition. The Buddy Mart Show is the Gator Bay Tuesday as we're awaiting the final score of Florida LSU in a big game for the Gators in Baton Rouge. As we speak, Florida leading by six points with just under two minutes to go, had double digit lead, playing one of the, playing probably perhaps the biggest, best game of the year. We'll talk about that. We've got David Whitley tonight. We've got lots to talk about. What's the situation with Jaden Rashada? Ah, I don't know about that. And uh, we'll talk to Cal Curtis also, who's been working that story today. And then later on, Lauren Meadows have a little roundtable discussion here on the Buddy Martin Show. Tell your neighbors and friends we're on there. Come join us and tell us what do you know, what do you think about the whole deal involving Jaden Rashada. Mm. It's time again for Buddy Martin. Call him up and tell him what you're thinking. But be kind because he's doing the best he can. Better. Stronger. Faster. Mama says that alligators are ornery because they got all them teeth but no toothbrush. Hey, what if the voice calls while you're gone? Take a message. <laughs> Bye. You ready, champ? I'm ready for this my whole life. I'm incapable of small talk. <laughs> but that's why you love me, right? Kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. Evening and welcome to the program as we speak. The Florida Gators trying to close out LSU in a big game for the Gators out in Baton Rouge. LSU going this one 12 and 3. Florida 8 and 7, playing maybe their best defensive game of the year. Last checked with a minute 15 to go, Florida nursing a 63 56. What is that? Seven point lead. Looks like it's in hand if they can keep from kicking it away and also to be able to get make their foul shot. So, we'll see. Could use a little good news tonight, right? Could use a little good news. We'll talk a little bit about the national championship game, the least watch national championship game since the BCS. Well, it didn't take a Einstein to figure that out. Why? Because why? The game was out of hand in the first quarter. Second quarter, boom. The ultimate beatdown, the worst showing by a team in a championship game. TCU, although a really fun team to watch and had a great season, did not belong there. But nonetheless, props to Georgia. You Gator fans, you better strap it on because we're going to have nothing but bulldog, 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 dog, 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 dog talk for the years to come because it's going to be here a while. It's beginning to nauseate me already, and I hate to think about what the next three or four years will, will be like, and especially, especially, this is the thing we're going to touch upon, if the Florida NIL deals don't come together and they don't close the deal on people like Jaden Rashada, the California quarterback who was the centerpiece of Billy Napier's 2000. And 23 class scheduled to be here in January after the All-Star game. He was a no-show. No-show. Don't know exactly why. I've been talking about it all day. I've had tons of emails, conversation. I'll tell you what little I think I know. Not much because everything's cloak and dagger. So as soon as we get to hear from our sponsor tonight, we're going to hear from the man in the orange and blue room who's always got all the answers. My friend David Whitley will be along to explain in detail exactly what's going on with everything. Is Florida, well, it looks like they got it in hand. Castle's on at the foul line, 63-56, and only 102 to go. So a big win for the Gators tonight. They need that. Gator Nation needs something to be happy about. Coming up next right here, after we hear from Titan MRI, David Whitley. 
Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life, and the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. All right, thanks very much. Appreciate that, Jeff. Uh, all right, let's go right to the orange and blue room. The man with all the answers. Remember the answer man? What was, who was that? Johnny Carson always had the answers. This guy's got all the answers and the questions. My good friend David Whitley joins the program. David, good evening to you, buddy. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, Karnak the Magnificent. Well, he was uh, one of them. It was an answer Carson. man, too. It might have been prior to answer him. Man. But there was, you know, Karnak was certainly the most clever. Yeah, had, had, the, had the envelope next to him. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No, that was wonderful. That was probably his most famous bit, wasn't it? I love that. Now, I may be so old, it might have been Steve Allen, so I don't know. So that's how my far back goes. But anyway, so not too much funny tonight except Gators I'm Lee. watching it over your shoulder, and yeah, I'm watching yeah, it yeah, yeah, on yeah. my wall here in the uh, in, uh, – they, they just need to make their free throws here in the last 43 well, seconds. Well, they got it nailed down now. I think they got it nailed at 60. They're at 10-point lead with 43 oh, to say. Yeah. Even I could close that out, David. You and I can go out there and close that baby out. And uh, it's it's a big win because this morning, Shane Matthews, on his show, I was on his show as I am on most Tuesday mornings, he said, can Florida beat LSU? I said, no. No, really? can't beat LSU because – they can't make it a one-man band, and Colin Castle can't keep carrying the team if other guys don't hit their shots. Boy, I saw stuff tonight that really encourages me, and not not just Castle and playing a usually good game. They had like at one point eight, seven, eight blocks, maybe more. I don't even know. And they they were rebounding. They ran the floor like they knew what they were doing. They looked like a basketball team. I love some of those young players. My new favorite player, and I told Shan, uh, fans this, is Riley Kugel, freshman, is going to be something else. And, of course, Alex yeah. Fudge had a big night. Lofton had a big night. Uh, and they played team ball. It really was an impressive win. Todd Golden may have it turned around. I don't want to be tree material. What do you think? Well, you're right. This, these last two games were really important, especially I think that one Saturday coming in and uh, with Georgia and Mike yeah. White. Yeah. That would have really stung you know, not only losing three in a row and losing at home, but you know, you got to admit, last guy you want to lose to is Mike White, who yeah was the coach here. And but yeah, I'm I'm a little bit surprised how how you know I I would have I, I would have thought that LSU would have won tonight. I mean, I'm not shocked that the Gators won, but you know, I mean, LSU, you know, what they 11 and three, 12 three, 12 three, 12 three, 12, I three. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, and you know. So, some records are a little bit misleading this time of year because you can yeah. put a lot of tomato cans early in December. But still, mm -hmm. any when you're playing any SEC team on the road, yeah. and you're you know waffling in the, in the 500 range, you come yeah. out with a win like this, and you play. And I mean, it, I, I mean, and they they played well. It wasn't just like they went in there and lucked it out. They they were the better team. Yeah. So they, uh, it, it's encouraging. And like you said, uh, you know, right now when there's a this this quasi. Rashada panic setting, and yeah, you, you yeah. need something to feel good about. Well, it's kind of a cloud hanging over Florida, and here's why. We'll get into this tonight. In fact, we're going to get a couple of guys on here and have a little bit of a roundtable discussion. I'm not one to get into the recruiting NIL deals because I don't know anything about it, and I have no good sources. I don't know anybody who really does, although there are websites that specialize just in that alone. But I, I don't chip pretend to know anything about it. I'm just like everybody else. But in this situation, David, tell me if I'm right or wrong. When your program has gone through a tough year, and let's be honest, that's what it was with the Gators. It was not a good year. And your only hope is maybe to scramble out of it and get a good recruiting class and make a few NIL deals. Well, let's be honest. They have not got that done uh, in the uh, in the uh, transfer portal. They have not got it done there. It just, it just hasn't, it's been bare bones I don't know why. I don't know what Shane says. We don't know who they wanted or who turned them down or how much money. We've heard all kinds of rumors and things. You hate to keep reporting on those. But anyway, so you get that. You get Georgia dominating. Now, Georgia's going to be a long time dominant. And you got no shot, basically, in the next couple of years of winning the SEC East, if you ever did. Billy's trying to build a team. He has a pretty good 
recruiting class. Would you agree? I think 11th, 12th, whatever what Going yeah. for I mean, doing pretty good. Not not great, but not but pretty good. And now the deal for Jaden Rashada, the California quarterback, appears to, and we didn't know this until somebody reported he didn't show up for school and didn't enroll in Florida, appears to be going sideways. Uh, and now this is your this is your this is your crown jewel of your class. Everybody says, well, Florida's going to be doing, they got two quarterbacks in a couple of years. Da, 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 da. And now something has gone wrong. And now you can take your pick. I've been all over the internet. I've been all over everywhere. Kyle Curtis has been researching as well to find out what's going on. And a lot of people know a little bit, but not much. And it's mm-hmm. in the dark shadows of the NIL. And I'm lost, David. How about you? Yeah, it's a guessing game is what it is because you can make the theory i mean florida's reasoning is uh it's a transcript issue right that that he got hung well, up. well i don't know about that i yeah, don't well, know I mean, about that, that. that's one story on. there's about three yeah. of them there's three right. of them yeah, out that's, there that's one of them uh you know you would think that 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 they would have figured out and gone over the transcript and and all those things long before now and i'm sure they did but if and i, I it just doesn't seem like that that's an, an, an I that they wouldn't have dotted or a T they wouldn't have crossed already and know that, oh, yeah, that this kid's ready to come in. And as far as academics go, that he got. So it's a little surprising that this would that if it is a transcript thing, that it would pop up last minute like this. Although mm-hmm. I, it's I'm not saying it's not possible. I, I don't I'm not in the academic uh, counseling area in Florida, but, I, you know, I. I, I will, t- if you take them at their word, okay, maybe mm-hmm. it is, we'll find out soon enough. But mm-hmm. it's only natural this day and age to think when something like this, oh, and I but, and it just, it makes you wonder, because obviously he, he had an, a, an NIL deal originally with Miami. So yep. for whatever reason, uh, whether it was Florida coming up with a better NIL deal or him just thinking, no, I'd re- really rather be at Florida, mm-hmm. he switched to Florida. So you'd think that that was taken care of. And then, you know, as of last week, he was all talking, you know, at the, all-star game in Orlando there were no signs of, of any waffling and he was you know going to move go right from Orlando to to uh, Gainesville right and obviously he took a detour somewhere so the natural assumption in this day and age as well I mean did somebody else get him and say all right well you know, whatever we're whatever Florida's paying you we're going to pay you x mm-hmm. so suddenly he's he's back on the market mm-hmm. and and you know I mean if, if it is that then and, and he's and he doesn't show obviously it will be an NIL deal and and at that point <laughs> He would become the poster boy, I think, for for NIL, uh, the the NIL concept gone wrong, and that you know, I, you know, the original thing was well, you come to campus, you, you make a few bucks on the side, kind of thing, and it, it would be obvious that this that it just turned into a wild bidding war for this guy. You know, um, I call it new acronym NIL is nothing is legitimate. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't. I don't even know, and not only that, you don't know how to govern it. Look, there's so much wrong with this whole thing. And I've talked to probably 12, 13 people that I know who know a little bit. Most of them media people today, back yeah. and forth, including you. And, you know, nobody, and, and I've had one person tell me they knew, uh, they, they, they've known about it, but they will not write about it because it's such a cluster, if you get what I'm talking about. It's so bad, so screwed up, so many different ways. And I try to get them to tell me, and I, these guys don't have a nail, but they're pretty informed. And mm-hmm. say, you know, can you give me a, was it Florida? Was it the, what how you know? And, and the closest I get, this is the smell test we're going through with. Like, I don't, the smell test, the academics don't, the academic thing doesn't pass the smell test to me, okay? Because as you say, they would have known this before. This didn't happen at the last minute. If they did, shame on them for not knowing because you didn't do your homework. But yeah. the smell test is what we have to go by. That's all we have, David. As reporters, is a smell test, right? And Lord knows my stiffer is bad enough as it is. So you get that. You get another one saying they reneged on part of the NIL deal. Didn't give them the money. And how can you deal with this when you go? If you're and there's got to be an as one of my friends says, there's got to be an agent involved somewhere, and there is got to be an agent involved. Yeah. My question is. How do you deal with the unknown when you don't even know the rules? I mean, look, 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 Michigan just got a level one, level three on Harbaugh for doing some of the things that are now almost legal under NIL. How do you figure that? You know, why does Michigan, not that I'm defending Harbaugh, 
But I mean, what are the rules? They don't have any. And so now you can sign somebody and get them committed. He's signed. And a guy show up with a half a million dollars and say, come on to our place. And I guess he can leave. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so. Yeah, I, it, it, is, it, it is It is. the wildest guessing game that I, this whole NIL thing that, you know, certainly that I can remember. Because, I mean, in anybody's career, because it's all just come out of nowhere in the last year and a half. Mm-hmm. Where, I mean, you, you sure long for the old days where kid would commit, maybe he'd flip. But, he, you know, mm-hmm. went to sign a grant and aid, that was it. You know, and yeah. and and now until that last minute, you, you, you just you just don't see this. It's it's just upheaval. We and, need. Right. Excuse me for interrupting you. And I heard you just sound yeah. like a preacher here. I know a lot of people are waiting to get on and ask questions. And appreciate all you people being on tonight. We need some kind of transparency here. We got to have something. And yeah, I guess if we have not anybody, go, it's kind of like the Congress. They're trying to they're trying to get, uh, get all the new members signed up and sworn in, and they can't because they can't agree on anything to do it. It's like this, you so you can't get any enough people together in a quorum in college football to figure out how the rules ought to be. Congress finally came up with the Republicans came up with a set of rules for their side in Congress, but right now, what are the rules? And I don't know who you think the most informed person is in the, on this. I don't know. I think me and you guys are pretty informed for the most part, as much as anybody. But we don't have any sources. No, I, so I have, I have read, very, yeah, very few NIL stories on that had really solid NIL information. It was all except for the one story where the athletic got you know got an actual contract mm-hmm. that they that they showed you know of somebody who you know, the eight million dollar that supposedly the kid from from Tennessee got. And that was, you know, they had the, the bona fide kind of, other than that, you just see all sorts of numbers thrown. And you know, I've had, you know, people who I, I trust and I, like th- that say, well, uh, you know, a certain running back that, you know, a, a, a top guy from Florida, he went, he went to somewhere el- else and, and he, he got uh, $600,000, which makes sense. You know, it sounds like, I guess know, that's I possible. Have, I don't yeah. know. And, and I mean, this, this is from, from, you know, a source I, that I know. So, and that sounds about right from from the numbers you see thrown around on, on what a what a you know a, a five star kind of guy would get mm-hmm. uh, who's not a quarterback. Right. Uh, if if you know the the it seems like the going rate for quarterback is at least is at least a million. Uh, which I don't even long. know. I, I know yeah. this much, and I for all the grief that that people in the media get, the only real truth tellers I know out there in this are the media, and and mm-hmm. and and we're limited. We don't know what yeah. what it is, and so how do you? I mean, how do you tell that story? Lots of people making comments tonight. Let me just get a couple in here, and then we're going to get Kyle to come in and talk to us for a minute about what he's learned today. Uh, Larry Gross says, "Where's Strickland and all this? Seriously, it's a it's a AD. He's an AD. I'm curious, Larry. The AD has no say over this. Don't you understand? It's not him. He's not allowed to fundraise." The rules are pretty clear, you know. I, mean, I don't know what they. Shane asked me this morning. What do you think? What happens in this? This happens in in other places. Do you think ADs get involved? Well, they're not supposed to, but do mm-hmm. I think they're involved? Yeah, I do. Do I think mm-hmm. it's dangerous territory? I certainly do, and I would certainly hate to see Scott Strickland get involved because it could be some serious penalties when the product comes out. So I don't know. There's one. Uh, you mentioned the you, you mentioned one issue transcripts. That sounds like an old story of fifty years ago when Florida. Every time Florida lost a guy to another school, they said he couldn't get in here. That was that story we all believe. We've all bought that, you know. Uh, now some of that might have been true, but we all know that now there's ways to do most anything if you can get the yeah. kids up to speed. So you got and that going this far with, with yeah with, with this, for a transfer yeah in, right exactly not qualify academically exactly it, now here's the other thing I'd ask you I'll, I'll shut up and bring in Kyle and you can kind of in the NIL deal let's say you're the coach and I'm and I'm I'm the agent or the or the or the other shot or whatever I say okay I hear this other guy got this much money you're bringing in another quarterback from Wisconsin and by the way I want it in writing I'm going to start after the sixth game I mean. You can't do right. that. Yeah, no, no. You, 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 I'm, I'm, just, I'm not saying it happened. I'm just saying, right, giving you a hypothetical. Right. Yeah. I mean, at this point, I said you can throw anything out there and it might be plausible, but that. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no coach, I don't think, no self respecting coach 
would would put that in a i just thought you know that that would just be crazy to do that and, and i agree if it was something like that you know i would hope that that they leak that that's what what the problem might be or whether it's florida or anywhere else and they lose and and you lose a guy like that and it comes down to well he wanted to guarantee are you there you can't do that yeah um i us talk to you for a second um uh, we, we're joined now by Kyle. Kyle, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Kyle tipped me off on the story of Kyle Curtis from Gator Bay earlier today and saying, what have you heard about? And I said, nothing. And then I read this piece, David, which I think you read too, on 247, about what went south. Now, I'm not a guy that likes to panic. I don't believe in throwing up my hands, saying the, you know, the sky is falling. But when you think about this, just a perception, somebody said, well, one of my friends said, well, who knows how good he is anyway. Yeah, but that's a different subject. He's perceived to be the crown jewel of his class, hmm. whether he is or not. And in this environment, David, and then Kyle, when you're building a structure in a class and you've got people and your crown jewel is now suddenly not in school, no matter what happens, that's got to be a warning sign, David. Yeah, I mean... It, it, Sure, you don't know for sure about anybody who signed, you know, whether it's a five star from Florida or, or, or anybody. But when when so much is emotionally invested in this one guy, and he disappears, just just the uh, just the, the psychic blow that would have mm -hmm. to the fan base, you know, that that alone yeah. would would be I don't say devastating, but you know, suddenly it's like it's like you know that the sky is falling in because. Um, you know, they, they, they need a long-term quarterback, you know, that, and not only does that, but, you know, they, they just need to feel good about, about recruiting. And he was the main guy that they were feeling good about. And you know, if, I mean, if you lose him, that, that is a, that is a gut punch. All right, Kyle, come in here and talk about this. You worked at the store. Here's a comment from Robert. I don't think Robert's fully informed about how the, what the AD's role in this yeah. is, but he says the AD is certainly the first, second is the Gator Collective, be patient, wait and see what happens. I agree with the third part, wait and see, but the fact is, Robert, the AD doesn't have a whole lot of control over this. He's, he's bound legally not to be involved in NIL deals, right, Kyle? Yeah, so kind of to piggy off of what David said, um, I think that, you know, Rashada being, he was the number 29 overall prospect. He, uh, late flipped from Miami, as you guys had mentioned earlier, he probably had a, an ideal set up with them. And I don't know what happened with kind of how the Gator collective or whatever, um, I guess NIL company that's giving him that contract. But, um, yeah, so it, it would be a massive blow to lose a guy that, a lot of people thought could compete for a starting position this year with Graham Mertz coming in. Um, a lot of people are optimistic that he could, you know, come in and have an impact right away. So, but the main thing that I've got from this is the fact that now that we've introduced kind of a third party to the whole recruiting process. Um, and I think that's kind of what some people were saying in the comments with the AD. That's, that's not really any of their um, place to, they're, they're more so just talking to the players, um, you know, doing their normal spiel on why the Florida football program is a, a, the right place to be rather than the money. So um, I, that's kind of what I've taken from it. And uh, it, it would it would be it would be an awful, you know, start to this new NIL era. And everyone's kind of learning as we go along. I don't want to call I don't want to call out. Uh, I'm not going to start judging people's intelligence or whatever to being higher and the mighty and all that. But John Terrell, I don't know you, but I think you have some information here that's not provable. And the unfortunate thing is we don't have anything that is provable. <clears throat> but when you start talking about the Florida Collective, first of all, it's the Gator Collective. It's not the Florida Collective. Really screwed this up. And the shot is gone. They are trying to use this other things to save face. How do you know that? I mean, how do you know that? What's your source? He'll be gone by the end of the week. Okay. That could happen, but you don't know that. I mean, you're making a statement like you flatly know Florida does not know how to play in this new NL sandbox. Well, let's just put it like this: it, it's a new, it's a new, it, it's a new arena, it's a new thing, and everybody's trying to figure it out. But I think there are a lot of people trying to figure it out, and Florida is probably 
right near the average, wouldn't you say, David? I don't think they've done a terrible no. job. Well, what, what, no, what is your react to that comment, David? You're, if they you're, were clueless, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't have the, you know, the twelfth rank. I mean, obviously, they've they've worked the NIL well enough to 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 get a bunch of four stars, and, and the guys that they came in that they did sign. Uh, you know, Rashada may be the anomaly here that someone who's coming in the last minute and offered him a king's ransom, and I mean, so if if someone came in offering two, does 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 Florida Florida's NIL just say, look, it's just not worth it? And yeah, the I mean, it it is true that Scott Strickland, Billy Napier, they are not directly involved. They can't be directly involved in this, uh, but I I think that it, it, they maintain the denial bill, and I don't know, if, but. I would be shocked if if they if they if they're not, you know, it, he, just say you know informed of what's going on, you know, fr- from the NIL, you know, from the NIL people. They don't, they don't just totally say, all right, here talk to the NIL people, you know, and we have and we we wash our hands from this. I would suspect that the NIL people, you know, say, all right, is it worth X amount of money? And if 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 they came in back to to, to Billy Napier through whatever channels and said and said you know School X is offering Jaden Rashad. You know, three million dollars said said if we had that would it be worth it to you should we do that you know and and he would get back to him in some way i would think i mean they're not totally left hand right hand not know what's going on but but they but it's not as if scott strickland is there just saying yeah give this kid this give mm-hmm. that it i mean you have to maintain a, sort of a wall of separation there mm-hmm. now and but I, you know i, I just I, I don't know if in far as nil is any better or or worse than than everybody else, because I mean, they've obviously worked enough deals to, to get the guys they have. So they, I mean, they know how the game is played, but 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 the game is just so. I mean, there are no rules in this game. So if they did, if someone did come in last minute with you know yeah. with a, this golden parachute for a shot, and he's yeah. suddenly thinking, you know, I, I, you know, if I Florida, if I make you know a million in Florida and I make two million somewhere else, you know, I'm going to do that. And he goes back to Florida, you know, mm-hmm. is Florida screwing up by not saying, all right, we'll give you three million? You know, or is that is that just a wise move? We don't. You know, we're all just talking, you know, sort of talking in the dark here. We we just don't know for sure. Yeah, but, I mean, you're right. You know, I'd I'd, I'd, lo- I'd love you know I'd love to be a fly on the wall. Yeah. At you know, at these places, but unfortunately, uh, you know, I, I'm, God didn't make any of us flies. Yeah, uh, I, I just want to say this, and I want to ask you guys, and I'll I'll back out for a second and start with you, Kyle, and then. You, David, a veteran savvy reporter that you are, I'm going to put some comments up here from some of our listeners, and we do appreciate the questions. Don't get me wrong; we're not one to put. There's no such thing as a bad question. Uh, some of your opinions get a little questionable, but uh, again, we're like Keith Hathcock says that was a rumor. Well, unfortunately, we're dealing dealing with rumors, and really, journalists don't do well with with, with rumors because there's nothing of substance to report. But in this situation, that's all we have are stories. The 247 story, and if you will, Kyle, uh, I'll read the lead on it, and I, we'll give a comment. And I'm going to put some comments on the screen from our listeners, and you guys tell me how you feel about it. You tell me if you think it's legit, if you think it's BS, or if it's an area of concern, or why it's not right if it's not. Here's a story on 247, Florence Price, 2023, signing Pittsburgh, California. Uh, high school five-star singer Jason Rashada, Jaden Rashada, excuse me, is not yet enrolled in the university, nor did he move in with the rest of the program's early enrollees. While Rashada is listed in the Florida student directory, does not mean he's enrolled at the university, but rather accepted on the merits of his high school academics. One source familiar with the development told Swamp 247 that Rashada is expected to enroll and arrive on campus this week. While others were unable to offer the clarity of the situation, Rashad was initially expected to enroll and move to campus after appearing in the Under Armour All-Star Game, All-American Game, took place in Orlando January 3rd, per Billy Coach. He's coming down to play in the All-Star Game here soon in the state and will come right over, Napier said. So I'm looking forward to working with him. Now, it is a bit disturbing that this story's out there and nobody's responded to it. And all the rumors about Billy, he blocked, they blocked Billy's phone and all this stuff. And there was this mysterious, I won't say mysterious, I don't want to sound like I'm making fun of the guy's faith. I'm not. Uh, where he said, uh, <clears throat> uh, it's in, in God's hands. That was the, that was the, 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 the tweet or the Twitter, uh, I believe, that Rashad put up. All right, 
Let's go with you, Kyle, and I'm going to give you some questions. You want to comment on that first? Yeah, so the only set in stones thing um, out of that, you know, report was the fact that he's not enrolled yet. And um, so other than that, it's all really kind of speculation and hearsay, she said, whatever, Um, you know, going on Twitter, hearing all these different reports. um, Obviously, something has gone off the track a little bit. Um, so it, again, uh, it's, it's kind of a weird spot for us to be in. Um, nothing's really set in stone. It's all kind of just speculation. And, uh, I guess w- hopefully we'll have an answer by the end of the week. David, this coming from Robert Turner. Uh, how does it what happens to any of them? Well, he, he can't be, it, it's, League, league. I mean, league, league, they can't, you know, uh, university can't have direct dealings with NIL. It's all handled through Gator Collective, Gator Guard that, that handles it. But like I said, I'm sure that there is some court coordination because, uh, I mean, otherwise, every uh, NIL would just get whoever they want and, you know, and just say, all right, we're going to sign this guy. And they may not, may not really want him, you know, I mean, so, I mean, there's some coordination, but I mean, it, it's not like Strickland is sitting there with, $10 million in his pocket and say, all right, you know, NIL, give it to this guy, give it to this guy. You know, I, I don't think he has a, 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 day, you know, a day-to-day uh, or hour-to-hour contact with these people. Um, you know, I, yeah, but again, I, a lot of this is just, is just speculation on what, on what is going on. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think that, that it, it, it does eventually fall back on, on everybody the the nil people the, the administration and everybody else if there is an issue like uh that with as far as getting these guys whatever however they need the the money i mean they can't offer them contract you, you know it can't be an inducement to come play that is considered illegal but the laws are written so vaguely that you don't know what's an indu- like in miami you know they sign a contract a lot of these guys with with john ruiz's paypal you know, to make certain amount of, of appearances and, and work for him, blah, blah, blah. Now, you know, it's funny how, you know, one guy would get $800,000 to work for PayPal and another hundred thousand. I don't, I don't know. I mean, that that's, that's a pretty good salary for, for making an appearances, but it, that's what makes it legal. I don't know how Florida goes about it. I don't know how, you know, a lot of these places go about it, but it's obvious that somehow, you know, money gets from, from, from player, from, from the fund to the player, mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, I, I didn't know. Did, did you say that, uh, that there was a tweet from Rashada saying it's in God's hands? Yes. OK. Well, that, you know, that makes you think that, yeah, that, so, that something has changed. That yes, it does. If, right. if it's no longer in his hands, in Florida's mm-hmm. hands, mm-hmm. if he's saying, you know, that, that well, uh, that, that, that there's uncertainty up there and God's mm-hmm. going, you know, I, you know, I, yeah, you know, I, I again, I'm not making fun, fun of like you making his faith, but uh it's not so much in God's hands. It's it, it's it's in the NIL's hands of whoever's coming after him, and it's in Florida's hands. To, do they do they match? Yeah. yeah I don't think are, I don't think Eddie Rojas of, of Gator Collective has got. So it's you know that's not yeah. going to work out. All right. Here's a comment. I don't know this guy. I'll give him his due. And Kyle, you tackle that one. Read it. See if you see anything that makes sense. Does it pass the smile test? Smile test. Anything there? I the 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 statement of the Gator Collective not being um, at par with other universities or s- stuff like that. I mean, th- we're, you're seeing the success that we landed a loan transfer an hour ago. We're getting we're being able to pull these players who have showed success at other schools um, and still being able to you know attract them, being able to bring back players, and it, it doesn't even grow across football. And Colin Castleton. Um, he, he, we were able to retain him. He was thinking about going to the draft. NIL was one of the big reasons that he stayed another year. So the idea that Gator Collective isn't, I think that the Gator Collective is doing that the best that they can with everything that they know. Mm-hmm. And um, they're, trying, they're trying their best to, you know, stay, stay ahead of that bell curve um, that, you know, that schools like Georgia. And, but those are, those are top four or five athletic um, associations in, in the, in the nation. So I think Florida, you know, con- consistently, as Mr. Willie said, you know, we're, we're, we just had a, came in with the top 15 recruiting class. 
Um, we past two years we've been super successful in the transfer portal, so I think that the Gator Collective is doing perfectly fine. Yeah. At some point, yeah. go ahead, David. I was gonna say, you know, it's funny you, you've heard, you know, as far as NIL, just in in general, like Florida State's NIL is not considered up to par and and somewhat struggling from from what you hear. However, you know they they've been cashing in big time in the portal. Right. So I mean, there's there's they're, more they're play ranked, here. Than they're that. ranked second in the portal right yeah. now. Florida yeah, is ranked 64th. Yeah, so I mean, there's more at play here than, than just money. There's a lot, there are a lot of other things. Although, you know, with Rashad, it sure looks like you know that that it's it's a matter of dollars and cents. Yeah, um, I don't want to cast you know, I don't want to cast gloom and doom on here because I think in ultimately we want to with all this just dealt with, it's going to have to be the coaches that you got, the players that you got, and they got to have a better team and more unity and, and whatever. Let's don't forget that the quarterback who won two national championships was a walk-on originally, not even a two-star. You know, let's just lose perspective. Granted, he had all five stars around him. I'm not. It's been proven that you have to have the best players to win. Uh, is Florida getting the best players? No. Have they made an advance? Yes. The ones that kind of concerned me were there were three or four people who transferred, and maybe it just couldn't stop them. I'm thinking, why all those offensive linemen? I know some of them weren't starters. They're that deep in offensive linemen. They couldn't have used Tarkin or you know, or the kid who went to UCA or the other kid that left. Uh, and and Trent one more really bothers me for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is, I think that you need to have a core of real hard nosed orange and blue blood Gators. I think that's what Kirby's got going for him. He's got, even on his staff, he's got former Gator Bulldogs. I think in the end, this is just a wild speculation, does not solve the problem tonight. It's a philosophy of mine that do you really want to build your team around a California quarterback? California quarterback? I mean, that's the thing. And people say, oh, you're crazy. Well, maybe I am, but I just know that there has to be unity. There has to be loyalty. There has to be a coach who... who who, who sticks to his plan, and I think Billy was. Bill, he's got to have a fan base that's willing to stick with him, and I'm not sure he's got that. I'm really not sure he's got that. So a lot going on there right now, and uh, and I don't want to be forecasting gloom and doom, but I think it's a time for concern, and I'm thinking, all right, guys, what would you do if you were really Napier here now? And I know he's got his own ideas, all this talk about needs to get an offensive coordinator. No, no. Shane and I have talked about that a lot. Let's forget that idea. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, never mind. The staff's pretty much intact. You could probably use a help in one position, perhaps. Uh, you certainly could use more good players. But uh, I don't know. You guys take it from here. And you're right, Rodney Goodwin. The fan base is frazzled. And the question is, how long can they hold together before they lose it and stop coming to games? Kyle, you're up first. I think that this is going to be a deciding year. Um, I th- I think that now we're seeing that we're 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 giving the fan base as a whole is kind of seeing Billy Napier go, and we're trying to keep on giving him those reasons. I, we got it under control. We got it under control. But I mean, this might be the cherry on top. Um, you know, as a fan base, you want to see all the puzzle pieces. You see, you follow recruiting. You follow all these stuff. Um, you see guys come in um, playing early times. You want to see all these puzzle pieces that you have come together. And I don't think that we've seen the puzzle completely come together yet. And uh, people are starting – It's it's been 14, 15 years um, since, you know, people say Gator standard. So I think that uh, the fan base is definitely kind of at uh, edge right now. David? Yeah, you know, I, 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 Frank, I hate the next eight months because all we can do is talk, mm-hmm. you know. Right. And, and we we won't know, and we're going to talk this to death. Uh, we will get at least some clarity in the next couple of days on Rashada, um, and wh- whether he comes. But you know, even if he comes, you know, we won't know if he's going to be any good or not right away. Uh, it's just going to be yak yak yak, you know. Until I, I just I wish we could fast forward to September third or whatever at Utah, and see. Mm-hmm and see what what the actual result of all this will start to be but you know for now it, it's just it's just conjecture uh you know we we can we can theorize say 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 he does come 
you know, and and they have a you know a good, you know, what is considered a good good to to, to you know, borderline, I don't want to say great, but you know, very good recruiting class. They come in, and he you know he's starting by game five or six. Okay, I mean, we we can we can theorize that, or we can theorize he's going he's just going to be lost. We you know we don't know, and then everybody will start looking to the next kid they sign the, from Texas. You know, well he'll come in and be the savior. You know, it's just. It's just going to be a lot of talk and and uh, without much proof, where we can where we can say you were right, you were wrong. We won't we won't know the the evidence won't be on the you know mm-hmm. till till start coming up till September third, fourth, and and then you know I mean heck heck I, I you know playing playing Utah out there with you know Cam Rising coming back he announced this week, uh, you know that that's going to be a heck of an opener, uh, and man I but until then you know it it just all talk uh, and. You know the NIL is is going is going always because you know even after this you know the portal is still open they're going to be looking for people after spring, uh, and I think it's it's too easy to say well they didn't get them it's all NIL's fault I mean there's so much more that goes into it than just NIL I mean that that is a a big part obviously but you know like you said with FSU it, it's not just strictly dollars and cents it's like you know some guys just you know they want to come here some don't you know that and it doesn't matter what you offer them uh, you know. And and with with Rashada, I mean, I I think it's pretty obvious though that it is just at this point it's, it's just got to be a, a matter of, of finance. He doesn't know, but Lauren Meadows is online with us, and uh, we're going to ask him to participate in this question before that David go. I know he's got to do some things, and that is just to update people who are just hearing about it. The news is, and we don't know the real answers. We think we we heard a lot, heard a lot of different things. There's some issue with Jason, Jaden Rashada, who is the crown prince, or the, actually the, 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 he is the centerpiece of the 2023 recruiting class, Billy Napier's prized recruit, the California quarterback, a four and now five star, depending on who you look at, uh, uh, recruit who was going to be the person, the promise in the promised land. And he did not report to school this week as expected as an early enrollee. We've heard a variety of stories why none of them have been documented, like transcript issues, but da 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 da. The fact is, he's here and uh, he's not here. He's supposed to be here and he's not here. And so, Lauren Meadows, good evening to you. I'm going to start this off and I'll, hey. I'll, we'll take one question, from answer from each person. Given what we got to deal with here tonight, and what you're, and something's got to have to be done, what does Florida have to do to get this train back on track right now, or is it off track? And is this disconcerting? Lauren, give us your take. Well, to get it back on track, I think you have to get a, um, you know, it sounds like from from all until you know, with everything going on, that you have to get an idea of just really get a handle on this NIL stuff. I mean, you, you, you find that, you know, now it's, it's basically become pay to play. And I'm one of those that thinks that Florida, the way they're going about things is kind of setting them up for the long haul. And what I mean by that is I think there's going to be adjustments to this and, and stipulations put in place and some of those things. And I think with Florida, not necessarily getting into full on bidding wars, I think they're putting themselves in, you know, in a situation where when those changes come, I think they'll be uh, designed to, you know, kind of handle those and, and handle the punches a little bit better than others. As far as Rashada goes, um, I just think it was never really, I mean, the way that things went down, even when he decommitted from Miami and then committed to Florida, there was a late kind of signing, you know, they said it was kind of West coast time and that kind of thing. But, uh, David, I think you were there that day. We kind of waited quite a while for Coach Napier to come in and that kind of thing. So it just it's just been off a lot of you know in a lot of ways, and um, so it's really not surprising. None of us can actually speak to um, you know the the NIL situation and if that is so. But um, you know it would. I think we all can make an educated guess that uh, you know. It, 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 there's something there. I don't know if it'll ever come out, but I, I would assume that in today's age, with everything you hear and the way that things are moving, I, that would that would be my guess. But I, I, that's just a, that's just a guess from somebody looking on the outside. All right, Kyle and David, I'll let David go. He's been here a long time. But uh, Kyle, 
respond to this and what he said and, and what do you think needs to be done immediately? I think that, um, you know, obviously this has the whole kind of Florida fan base in a bit of a frenzy. Um, I think that Napier needs to find something for, you know, the fan base to look forward to in this upcoming year. Um, they didn't really finish the year off how a lot of people wanted them to. Um, you kind of have that sour taste of, hey, we had the fifth or sixth most people transfer out of the program. Um, it's kind of just been a lot of negatives, not a lot of pros recently sur uh, surrounding that program. Uh, so I think that they just kind of need to find, you know, hey, we got this something like this to look forward to. And a lot of people saw that in Jaden Rashada, and that's why I think it's kind of been that big shot is because he was. He was the crown jewel of this 2023 class, kind of a late addition. And, uh, you know, as Lauren said, it was kind of a weird situation. Uh, decommitted from Miami. I think he decommitted at, super late at night, like at 12.30 one night. He made a tweet out there, and it was kind of just out of the blue. So it's kind of just been a weird situation. And uh, I think that right now the Gators, the Gator fans are just trying to find something to look for. Uh, to cheer for in this, you know, football program. David, wrap it up for us, and then we'll hear what Kyle's got for a trivia question. And you see the David fans and the Kyle fans all chipping in, Lauren fans. Glad to have you guys here. David, finish it all for us with where they need to go next and do what mm -hmm. to keep this program well, together. Well, if if it is – if he does show up by Friday, then, you know, the train hadn't jumped the tracks. If he doesn't, I think it's important for them – to either come out or tell somebody, be it you, me, or somebody, what exactly happened. Because everybody, every fan is going to be assuming the worst and that they just, as, as they said, they don't know what they're doing. They don't have their act together. I think they're going to have to let it be known either through, through some channel how this came down, if they did lose them, and, and the steps they, they did take just to say, look, we did our job. If it, if it came down to it, that School X offered him $5 million, we just weren't going to go there. And fans would understand that, but I don't think that they, if, if they do lose them, that they can just leave it hanging, and say, all right, and because then fans are going to be filling in that blank, thinking, yeah, we don't know what we're doing, we can't, we, you know, wh whether it was it was him needing to be to, to a, a guaranteed playing time or, or whatever, you know, we just can't close the deal on these nil on, on the bit really big fish, uh, you know, so I, I think it's incumbent on them if he doesn't show up to say, well, you know. What did happen? I mean, I mean, Billy Napier's not going to have a whole press conference and give us a blow by blow of it. But you know, I mean, I'll be calling. And they need to let somebody know what you know what, what went down just to get the word out to the to the to the fan base and assure them that they know what they're doing. Or you know, maybe they don't know. You know, we'll see. But whatever it is, they got they they can't just let this. If, if Rashada doesn't doesn't end up at, at Florida, they an explanation needs to be given from someone. Mm -hmm. Well, what is the royal family saying? Don't complain, don't explain, right? I disagree with that. I think he has to, there has to be some transparency. This is a moment of truth, something we've talked about with Billy the recent weeks and months. I think he wants to talk, but someone's got to step up and address this, or the perception is that the Gators just don't care, and you cannot have that in this world. Good stuff, David. Appreciate it, buddy. Take care. Read him right. in uh, Gainesville Sun and all Gannett papers. He's one of the best. And then you get a chance to hear any of his jokes tonight. Maybe next time, David. All right. Good night, guys. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, night, so we've got this uh, trivia question that Lauren's got for us, which, uh, Kyle, if you want to hang, you can do that. If you don't, you got to go. I understand. But uh, we'll do the trivia question. Let's get it on. He went to the trouble to go to the Spurriers and record this. And here it is. I'm not going to play the promo. Because we, we, we're, we're late now. But I wanted to say, Lauren does a great job on this. He goes out. He gets a Florida-related trivia question. He goes to Spurs Grand Grill. And by the way, guys, I've got some news for you. I don't know if it's been announced. I hope I'm not breaking it. But they're going to announce in February a new street called Steve Spurrier Way. There's going to be a dedication and everything out there. I thought, hmm. I invented a place called Urban's Way one time, but it was a book, you know. And this is going to be a real live street. So, we'll, Freddie, thank you for that. I'm sure it'll be great. They do a great job. All right. Here's your question, Lauren. Lauren Meadows coming to you live from Spurs Gridiron Grill 
with Tuesday Night Trivia. On April 2nd, 2007, the Florida Gators defeated the Ohio State Buckeyes 84 to 75 to win their second consecutive NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Who did the Gators defeat in the Nashville semifinal two days earlier to advance to the championship? Once again, in 2007, who did the Florida Gators defeat in the national semifinals prior to being crowned two-time national champions in 2007? Be the first to answer and you'll be entered into our drawing for swag and other prizes. With Gator Bait Media, this is Lauren Mellon. I thought that was a woman. That was Spurrier picture up there. <laughs> All, right. All right, Lawrence. So you, whoever's first in gets the answer to this. And there's a couple of people online now. While you're doing that, let's get right back to, uh, let me get to Kyle. Kyle, you heard about this story today when it broke. And you quickly texted me on your way to class. Uh, and what was your immediate reaction when you heard it about the Shada not being in school? Yeah, so I, I was actually, you know, just I was on my way to class, first day of class for me, and uh, I got a text from um, one, of, one of my roommates, and he was like, have you seen this Rashada stuff? So um, I, I immediately just went to Twitter, and a lot of people started, you know, th there still wasn't really anything set in stone out there. So I sent you a text, and I, it, the first thing that kind of came to my mind is what, what went wrong, because I think this is the first – at least the first case that I know of where, you know, someone signed with a team in a week prior and now there's speculation that he may not even be coming to the school um, the, strictly, you know, due to a NIL situation or whatever it may be. Um, but I think Mr. Whitley said it earlier about how it, back, you know, even 10 years ago, if you signed or even committed, there might be a flip or something like that along those lines, but nothing – um, nothing like kind of what we saw today. So um, I was more so kind of just like confused as to what happened. And I was also, you know, kind of interested. So uh, that was probably my first impression on the whole thing. All right. Good job, buddy. Patrolling that beat, going to school. Kyle, read him in the uh, Gator Bait and hear him online here. Good job. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. You guys have a good night. Hey, Kyle Curtis, uh, up and coming, up and coming, as you know, Lauren. Up and coming, a guy that's really got uh, his game. All right, you got any answers for us? No, I wish I did. Uh, I think it's uh, no. I mean, on your trip, right on your trivia question. Oh, oh excuse <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the yeah. answer, by the way, is uh, not dilly it's, dilly. It's not dilly dilly. I know I'm joking, Freddie Weeby. Yeah. Put dilly dilly on there. It's um, uh, our, one of our resident basketball fans. I'm sure he was just watching the Gators take care of LSU. We'll talk about so that. that. Would be yeah. Our, yeah. Uh, the 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 tailgate uh, Savoir Faire, uh, Nat Blaylock. Yeah, with the answer UCLA. How about that? The mayor of Alachua. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? Yeah, I, I did. I, I've been I've been I've been out to the mayor's homestead several times. Yeah, I didn't remember. If you know, I know what I named you, the mayor of Newberry, and then he moved on me, and he moved to Lachway. Oh, so yeah. and I had to make you the oh, mayor of Lachway, and <laughs> so I still call him the mayor anyway. So, yeah, dilly yeah, dilly. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. So good job. He gets in his. He gets in the in the in the in the the, the, the what do we call it the hopper right in the hopper the and, hopper. Yeah. yeah, and you draw that out here in a couple of weeks, and they'll get stuff from Weebies and, and Spurriers and what have you. All right, so there you go. All right, all right. Let's talk about basketball. I mean, talk about an impressive win. As I said earlier tonight, Shane asked me this morning, "Do you think Florida has any chance against LSU?" I said, "No." He said, "Why?" Yeah, I said, you said did. "Because because why? Because well, because Colin Castle can't be a one man band, and you know he 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 has been carrying the team. They've got to start hitting shots. Well, guess what happened tonight?" They hit some shots, and they play some D. Yeah. They hit how many blocks they wind up with? Eight or nine? I, I don't know, but it, it well, was seven quite late a few. in the game. I mean, they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They were uh, they were they were playing well defensively. Uh, I think LSU is kind of a one man band in a lot of ways offensively, and 
kind of similar to similar to Florida in some ways. But uh, tonight, Florida was able to get in, um, you know, get in the groove kind of as a team. And they kind of went went to Castleton down the stretch. He was actually going and getting the ball while they were intentionally fou- intentionally fouling, you know, to try to extend the game. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, he stepped up, and I think he was maybe late late down the stretch, or maybe uh, five or six yep. from the free throw line. Yeah. So I mean, you know, you 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 never know. I mean, it's it's real oh. early, and you know how college basketball is. They always say college basketball doesn't start until mm-hmm. till conference play, and you know, Florida has been in. Pretty much every game in conference, uh, you know, had a tough road loss at Auburn. Game they, they easily could have won yeah. and, and, you know, dropped a tough one at home, Texas A&M. But they're starting to find their stride the last couple different of Different team. So, you know, different team good. now completely. Yeah. They move the ball yeah. down the court. They look like they know where they're going with the ball. I love this kid, Roddy Kugel. I mean, when he gets his game going, he's mm-hmm. going to be something. He's a handler. Yeah. He shoots the ball saw, good. Um, and, of course, oh, yeah. we, and he's, we all, he's, a, he's a player. He, yeah. uh, I, I saw him. Uh, he and Denzel Aberdeen both. I saw them in uh, the uh, the Florida High School tournament uh, game. Uh, they played Olympia High School, which is their rival, and uh, both both young men were impressive. I think Aberdeen, once he kind of gets into his body, is going to find himself in the rotation as well. So you no, got there ain't Dr. nobody. Phillips. There ain't nobody yeah, named Denzel Aberdeen. That's a name made up name. If ever was a show business name, that's it. <laughs> Denzel Aberdeen. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Good grief. Oh my yeah. gosh. That's great. Yeah. All right. So uh, do me a favor. Stand by right there. One second. Let's tell our folks at Melvin Law and give them a shot here. All of our sponsors. When you're a member of the Gator Nation, you know what it means to never back down. Melden Law has been a proud supporter of the Gator Nation since 1971. Two forces that won't back down. As the old saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. Melden Law, official University of Florida law firm, injury, uh, check them out on uh, their website. Get some tickets for the Mel the Law. And actually, it's a Facebook page, and they give away stuff all the time. All right, Lauren, big win for the Gators in basketball. Your favorite sports are coming up track, uh, women's basketball. Uh, and, uh, and I know you uh, like to follow softball. But today you went to Spurriers, and there was an event out there, which was kind of unexpected. Tell us what happened, what went down, and if it, why it's significant. Well, I think it was significant. Uh, there was the first, uh, the women's basketball team was there, and uh, they were in the little area there on the first floor, kind of private area, and um, had quite a few media people there on. Bob Redman was there kind of following things, but – for what I understand, it was the first NIL deal for the women's basketball team as a whole. So it was actually a team deal that um, is provided for them. I'm not necessarily sure the exact number, uh, you know, what, what they will be given, but um, each player will receive a certain uh, financial stipend, and then they all were able to, uh, which, you know, this used to not be the deal. They all personally had their meal paid for you know which until two years ago wasn't wasn't legal so now they can go be wined and dined based upon their you know quote-unquote celebrity status that kind of thing so it was the first deal for the entire team and uh the entire coaching staff was there and i mean i think it's just that you know not only is it good for the florida women's basketball team but i think it kind of uh shows you the carryover and the viability now that NIL is going to have for the women's sports. There's, a, I know there's a, a collective kind of coming forward for NIL for softball as well that I'm aware of. Um, Talitha Diggs signed um, a a deal with Wells Fargo. Um, you know, not only coming off her great college season, but also then her performance at the World Championships. So, you know, I think that all these. Um, you know, now as NIL continues to branch out and, you know, you have these young ladies that are, are, are you know, um, attractive both inside and out, very good people. 
Um, you know, and I think it speaks to, you know, what Kelly Ray Finley has done to kind of, um, you know, improve the, the, the women's basketball brand, uh, kind of put herself in a situation where people want to be around her and, uh, you know, she's got Kelly's kicks and some of those things, but just really, uh, putting the, the, the women's basketball program at, 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 you know, in, in the view of, of those that, that make those money decisions and people want to be a part of that. So, it, you know, I'm, I, it was a good night for the program for sure. Good job, as usual, Lauren, on the trivia question. You've been all over the show this week, and uh, glad to have you. Thanks for everything <laughs> you do. And uh, give, my, give my regards to your, to your wife. Who's, by the way, my wife loves tell her, loves her posts. Since she, she oh. a comment. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's the best. All right. all right, we'll see you soon. Uh, appreciate you, buddy. All right. Take care, and don't work too hard, okay? All right. All right, Lauren Meadows. Our coach. All right, going to say before we go tonight, going to tell you about my sponsors, Renstar Medical Research. One of them being uh, such good people and people who have committed to us over the years to do this show and made it possible, really. Their support has been so key to what we're doing here. And uh, they not only do that, they also uh, are a terrific stakeholder in downtown. In Ocala, their business is... Uh, uh, right there in the, in the downtown area. Uh, they're participating in the city and the issues and things that go on. Uh, and I think we're just so blessed to have this uh, high-quality patient-centered clinical research facility. As you know, you read all the news about the research and the data that's needed. And Renstar Medical Research has it. They have uh, cutting-edge clinical research trials in Ocala on things like migraines, osteoarthritis, Alzheimer's, psoriasis, fibromyalgia, along with many other conditions that affect us right here in this community. So they do these clinical trials, and you can even be a part of them. If you want to check out their website, renstar.net, they have these trials. They had over 700 of them since 1998, and they're looking for ways to give us better lifestyle, better health, and their information goes to biomedical companies throughout the medical industry. So Renstar Medical Research seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Thanks to our guest tonight. Really good show. Thanks to all you. Busy time. Let's hope we've got better news tomorrow night. Tomorrow night we're going to have uh, David Moulton, one of our own, by the way. Uh, we'll be checking in from out in, in Texas, talking about things that he particularly likes and loves. Um, and uh, we'll also be here talking to uh, Tony Barnhart. That's, it's his dog, so let's give him his day. So uh, until then, I'm Buddy Martin saying have a great night, folks. Thanks for listening and watching.